Okay, great. So welcome everyone. I'm gonna switch my camera so you won't see me anymore, but you'll hear me and you'll see um, what's in front of me on the um, camera. Let me see. <laughs> and then let me gotta switch it so that it's not mirrored. Okay, so just, um, so we're, I have an eight and a half by 11, like regular standard piece of paper. Um, if you have something a little thicker, you know, nicer paper, what, even watercolor paper, that's great. If you just have regular old printer paper, that's good, okay? Then, um, some of you are new to Zentangle, so you may not have all of these tools, but I promise I will make it work with whatever you have. But those of you with, you know, all of the goodies from all of the years, um, some things to think about. So you'll, most of you, I think you have your Tortillon, you have your Zentangle pencil. Here, I'm going to spotlight so that, um, there we go. Okay, so now you can see my stuff a little bit closer. Um, and then I... I have a, I found a Micron 10, which is a really thick one. You may not have one. If you don't, some other options are an apprentice pen or an 05. And if you don't have any of these, don't worry. Really, it's not a problem. I'm just giving you some options. Um, and then if there are other colored pens that you'd like to have handy, so then you want, you want a Micron, a black 01 for sure, which I think, Sherry, I know you needed new material, so hopefully you have that. Um, if you have a brown one, maybe you wanna play with a brown. Amy and I got these awesome new gray ones at Zen again, which next time around I'm gonna get for all of you because um, they're really great. But if you have also, like say you have a brown, uh, a blue micron and you also have a blue colored pencil or any other color, pencil and pen that kind of go together, those, those might be fun to play with. Those are just things to think about, not requirements at all. And I promise I'll give you options um, for, you know, the basics and then, you know, the, the sky's the limit in terms of um, creativity and color and things like that. So um, we're going to begin, as always, if you have questions, go ahead and unmute to ask, but otherwise I'm gonna have you muted so that we can have some nice quiet time. Um, we're going to begin with a little meditation and then we will dive in with our tangling. Any questions before we start? I yeah, Marsha. I have a Micron 8 and a Pigma 10. Which one would be better to use? Ooh, show me the Pigma 10. I don't know. I can't think of. Uh, maybe the 8. I think the 8 might be better. 10 okay. for the Pigma 10 might be too much. Okay. Thank you. Cantor? Yeah, Myrna. Cantor, what's the, you said an apprentice. I have the a Pigma pen 05. That sounds good. Yeah, that I think that's the apprentice pen. But I also have a one of these 05 too. Either one. They're the same uh, size nib. Either one is good. Okay, great. Super. Okay, so let's settle in and get ready for our time together. So go ahead and find a comfortable seat. I'm gonna put something up on the camera for you to enjoy for a moment. Um, I did not make this, but I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, but you can close your eyes and let's just take some breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. And as I'm speaking, just check in with your body and notice any place that feels tight or uncomfortable or you feel like you've been holding tension and just sort of breathe into those spaces. Tonight, we're gonna to explore what happens when you zoom in on something. Uh, 
at the Zen Again retreat that Amy and I were at in November, the whole uh, idea of the weekend was Zentomology. So there was a fun play on words of, you know, the study of, of entomology, the study of insects. And when we look closely at things, how, how do we categorize them? How, how do we create them? Uh, what do they look like? What do they feel like? Um, and so it was very playful, but it was very interesting. Um, this idea of zooming in and studying a tangle closely. And we can set an intention for ourselves tonight in our own lives. You know, what would we in this new year, what do we want to zoom in on? What do we want to make sure we're paying close attention to and we're studying? We're noticing and bringing love and care and time and focus to what are those things in our lives that are worth zooming in on, worth holding the magnifying glass up to and saying, yes, I see you. This is something important. And so as we continue breathing, take a moment and find that intention. Find a thing worthy of your attention. Bring it into your mind. Hold it there. See it in 3D. Turn it around. Look at it from every angle. Think about why this is important to you. Why does it matter? What are you going to do in this year ahead to show it the time and care that it deserves? How are you going to nurture it? How are you going to further develop your relationship with it by diving in, getting close? Breathe into all that that means, breathe it out. Breathe in patience with yourself as sometimes it's easier to run away, to zoom out, to not focus too closely. Breathe in creativity and appreciation for a new perspective, a new lens, a new way of looking at things. Let go of doubt. Let go of self-criticism. And for our time together tonight, keeping that thing in mind that is worthy of your attention and focus and love. Also just bring enjoyment. For the next hour and a half, we're just us together, making something beautiful, enjoying one another's company, sharing a common interest. What a beautiful thing. I'm grateful to all of you. A couple more deep breaths. And when you're ready, open your eyes and we'll begin. So this was the card that we received in the mail for Zen Again 2022, just back at the beginning of November. And this gorgeous uh, magnifying glass and, and insect and berries uh, was by Maria Thomas, who's one of the creators of Zentangle. And um, I just loved this. It's so beautiful. And she's such an incredible artist and she loves to draw bugs. So the, hence the Zentomology and, and that, that whole study, um, the whole idea of um, the studying Zentangles really closely like this. So we did an exercise at Zen again, where we got this magnifying glass on a piece of paper and it was blank on the inside. And we began to tangle on the inside and that was fun. However, when I do art, I don't want to draw on somebody else's art. So I wanted to figure out for us tonight how we could make our own magnifying glass 
and that in a non-scary way, because that's what Zentangle is all about. It's breaking things down so that they're just lines and curves and shapes. Um, and then to put our own tails inside our own magnifying glass that we've made with, with all, all the fun things that, that that can come with that. So this was the inspiration. And with that, we're gonna go on our own exploration. And um, I don't know if you heard, I, I'm not sure we'll finish everything I have in mind tonight. So we'll continue next week um, if we don't complete today. So I'm going to set this aside. And now we have we have our by eleven piece of paper. I don't know. It's hard for you to see because I can't zoom out. But it's an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. I'm going to fold it in half. Um, you know, horizontally so that it. It's not like, not not this long skinny way, but this way. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's hard for me to show you. Um, so just line up your edges. And then I use a thumbnail to just sort of get the crease in. I didn't even ask you to bring a pair of scissors because you don't need them. Just if you stay with me, you won't need scissors. So I just run my thumbnail up and down that seam. Then I... I open it and fold it the other way and I run my nail up and down that seam. Okay. And then after, you know, a couple times one way and the other way, if you hold close to the top and then I'm just taking the, the corner up there, I'm just slowly going to tear my piece of paper in half. And I really like the rough edge and I do this a lot. So I don't need a scissor. So then you have half a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. You can save the other half because the our third week, I have something else I want to do with that. So I can set it aside. Okay, I'm going to see if I can zoom out a little bit. No, nope, don't know how to do that. No? Here, wait, one sec. Let me see if I can put it on something so I can get a little bit more. Did we fold, did I, I think I did, did we fold it in quarters or just nope. half? Just in half. Just like, in half. You should be able to just tilt the whole arm up until it's taller because I can oh, see yeah. to like stand it up and yeah. then flip down the top and you'll get a higher view. Thank you. I think, I think this is good though. Can everybody see? It's just half, it's just half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I can see it. Okay, good. All right, so then I'm gonna take my pencil. And by the way, anyone just joining us, this is not traditional Zentangle. We kind of just like jumped off the deep end and here we go. Um, so I'm gonna take my water bottle, take the rubber bottom off and I'm gonna put it, I want it like down here in this lower right hand side, but I wanna leave a little space because we're going to make this magnifying glass but so we need a little bit of the handle to show so if you can see if you can kind of see i'm gonna let me let me trace it and then i'll you'll see what um what i'm talking about here so let me do that i'm just going to trace around the bottom of my water bottle so you have your glass or whatever else Okay, and I just needed a round shape. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and it's probably about three inches, maybe a little bit more. Okay. So then we need to give our the, the the glass of the magnifying glass but it needs a, a rim around it so i still with my pencil i'm just gonna make a thin aura around the circle that i traced and again i'm not i'm not gonna be too crazy about it i want it roughly the same all the way around, but it's really 
not too much of a big deal. There's going to be a lot of other stuff going on. So, okay, so I just did a, a little aura around that. Okay, people feeling okay about that? Okay, so now we're still gonna pencil in our a little handle here and this kind of stuff, you know, you I'm not suggesting you should use an eraser, but we're gonna pencil it in so that when we go over it with ink, we can feel really confident about our, um, our strokes. And I just looked at Maria's handle here and I was like, okay, so it doesn't need to be so fancy and, and we're not gonna, maybe we're not gonna color it in, but maybe we are. So I just tried to simplify what she had going on here. So I just took the basic elements of it. And so for me, it was a little bit of a, you know, the first part where it comes off of the, the lens with two little curved lines, one on either side maybe about a quarter inch apart. And then following the curve of the lens, I just sort of cap that off. And then hers got skinnier. So again, those curved lines, but I brought them in a little bit tighter. And then I sort of cap that with a curve because all of this is, is rounded. It's a handle, you know, it goes around. And then she started to widen it out again. So I sort of came out on either side and this is just was looking at it and kind of saying, okay, well, if this were Zentangle, how do I make this happen? So I came out from either side a bit. And again, we're sketching in pencil. So when we go over it in pen, you can adjust if you need to and then curved it around. And then if you run off the paper, whenever you run off the paper, it's that's fine. That's how long you're, it, it's coming off of the page. So we're just giving it the, we're just indicating that this is a magnifying glass. So then it was a little bit more of a section that was here. So I just came straight down. And then again, I curved that. And then a little wider still. And a I curve around. Out of focus. Better. Not really sure how else I can do that. Um, okay, and then we kind of just fall off the page. So we kind of got this handle of our um, magnifying glass going on here. Okay. All right. So now if you have an, a micron 05, let's go ahead and take that and we're going to ink over the pencil. <laughs> I have an 01 and a 10, so which should I use? I would use your, why don't you use the 01 for this? Thank you. But really anything is fine. I'm gonna use a five. Black though, if you have black, go with black. So I'm gonna go back the way I came. I'm gonna start with that first circle that we traced our um you know our water glass whatever we used and i'm turning this paper just like i would turn a tile so that my hand can stay in a consistent position and i can go around comfortably just watch the for wet ink as you're going around so i did that circle first 
and then we're going to go around and do our outer circle and you can you can adjust if your pencil line was a little strange the first time around you can course correct as you go over it in pen <laughs> or the pen could be weirder than the pencil which is happening for me but that's fine okay so we've, we've got this these two orbs here Okay, and then you can go in and retrace the handle. And I, it's just sort of like a tip of the hat saying like this is magnifying glass you know it's nothing fancy we can add more detail later and but it's just enough for the eye to say oh i know what this is i'm pretty sure anybody who looked at any of your would say aha uh -huh, it's a magnifying glass Everybody good so far? Great. So now we're gonna work inside of our magnifying glass. So this is what we are in on. That means it has got to be big. <laughs> okay, think zoomed in, think big. I'm gonna use my 10, my micron 10. If you have an eight, that's good. If you have a five, that's good. If you have an O1, one, that's fine too. We can, we can accomplish the same goal. Um, it, you'll just get um, the 10 will just be a bolder uh, line, but I tried this with the pens as well and it was fine. If all, all you have is an 01, oh, no. you could even try a brown pen or some other color. We're going to um, divide up this inside of this circle with some lines that are mm, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch apart. Um, I'm going to start center and it's not a straight line it's gonna just we're gonna let it be really natural and have a little bit of a curve to it so maybe just watch me first so i'm just gonna start there it's not a huge curve just a little little bit of movement and then i'm gonna do another one Like that. And then I'm going to go on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so I ended up with six ish lines, but if you have four, five, eight, whatever, all good. Okay, and then we're going to aura these lines. So you can decide, you know, if you want to aura to the left or aura to the right. Um, this one I'm going to take on the left hand side. So just a tight little aura there. Or there, just take your time with these. So just to even them out, and then I'm going to go on the right hand side it just seems like Okay, you should end up with something like that.
Everybody good? Great. Okay. So we're going to squish some orbs in between um, in each of these um, segments here. So I'll start in the middle again. So we call them orbs because they're not circles and they kind of nestle one within the other. So I'm going to, I'm not going to start with a full one at the end here. I'm going to imagine that it's kind of we see is part of it here. Okay, and that's our first orb. We're going to be doing a lot of these. So settle in <laughs> and get used to it. And so the next one, it, it doesn't come like it's not a full one right next to it. It's going to start tucked behind it. So I'm going to come like that. So I imagine how the whole thing would be if it were whole, but it's not. So I lift up my pen and I draw behind and I imagine. And I'm going to keep doing that all the way across. And I'm really taking my time and imagining that full orb as I draw. And when I get to the end, I just imagine this last one that kind of falls off the edge there. So we're going to have something that looks like this. And then once you've done that and filled the whole row, I like to go back in and color in these little notches. They're called interstices. They're little, the, the spaces spaces. Micah, you are using the 10? I'm still using the 10, yep. Okay, sorry, I got You could use a 10, you can use an 8, you can use a 5, you could use your 1, really anything. The 10 just makes it a little bolder. Just coloring in little spaces. Okay, so we have a row of orbs. You know, it's like a string of pearls, one nestled behind the other. So we're going to go ahead and do that for all of our other sort of complete stripes here. And I, I can help you. We can draw these together, these little sections on the top and bottom if you have them. Um, if you want to hold off on doing those, I can sort of give you a little guidance if you're stuck. But otherwise, we're going to take a few minutes now in silence, and each of us, we're just going to do our thing in these same thing, just like we did in that middle row for the others. And, and don't worry if your orbs don't line up with the other orbs in the other rows. That's really inconsequential. And I feel like I'm going to draw all my orbs and then color in all the interstices. But if you like to go, you know, the other way, you know, go one row at a time, feel free.
So if you're concerned about these top or bottom little sections, you just just follow through with that. Imagine a whole orb and kind of play that out in your mind. Kind of doesn't even really matter. Just a hint at what is going on there, and then it all falls into place. And then we're going to color in all the interstices. I'm turning my tile over so I don't drag my left hand, my sloppy left hand over any wet ink. So you need to do that too. It's one of the things that I noticed about Zentangle, even though we're not working on a Zentangle tile tonight, it's still small enough that you can turn it so that your hand, your drawing hand can be comfortable the whole time. I don't know of it, if in a lot of other art forms that the artists are turning their canvases or their drawings so that they can work on them in a way that feels comfortable. I like that about Centangle. All right, I'll give you another minute to play with that. I see mostly heads down. You need another minute? Yes? Okay. It's always that delicate balance of giving you enough time and not wanting you to get bored. <laughs> you are way ahead of us on this one, I think. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a fast tangler too, so I will I will give you a minute. <laughs> I've also drawn this like four times, so. <laughs> And if I move on in a moment, um, you can always come back and finish this. It will have, it does not affect what comes next directly.
And if you're finished and waiting, you can always zhuzh, as we like to say, um, can go back in and make sure all of your interstices are colored in or, you know, give any love to any line or magnifying glass or anything like that, or, you know, take a sip of wine, whatever your heart desires to use, John. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move forward. You can come back to this. You know, this is this is what it is. So um, we'll do more to this later, but um, you know what to do. So I'm going now to my O1. So maybe that's what you've had in your hand this whole time and that's fine. Um, and maybe you're switching over. So I'm now with my O1. We're gonna start to work over here. So this is our magnifying glass. This is what is being magnified. So we, we have to create the object that is the, the non-magnified version of, of this. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense or not. So we're gonna go with, um, if you know Zentangle, uh, with a Marisu shape. Um, it's a spiral, it's very shell-like. And um, so I, I've drawn this a bunch of times and what I find happens to me is if I start too far away, if I start the spiral too far away from the magnifying glass, then I end up with this huge shell that doesn't look smaller than what's being magnified. So my advice to you from, from experience is I wouldn't go start the, the center of your spiral, maybe it's three quarters of an inch, not more than an inch away from the edge of your magnifying glass. You know, I, I'm going sort of directly to the left. It could be, you could go on an angle, you know, but we'll have the most space here, but don't go too far away when you start. So maybe watch me first with my O1. And so a tight spiral, but not, I don't know, let's see. In, my, in the one that was a success, I'm looking over my shoulder, maybe the rings are like half an inch apart from each other. But let's, let's take a look and see who knows how this one's gonna go. These spirals have a mind of their own. So anyway, it will look beautiful. We're just going for, we want this to look the, like the magnification. So I'm gonna start here. And when I hit the magnifying glass, that's great. I'm gonna draw behind, imagine. And end just like that. Okay, so when I, when I get to the magnifying glass, I kinda of wanna just have it tucked under a little bit. So yeah, I think I started about three quarters of an inch away. A, a pretty ha half an inch kind of spiral width until I got around to the magnifying glass and then stop. Going clockwise, I suppose you could go counterclockwise if that felt better, but I like going clockwise. Somebody got unmuted. Who is it? It's fine if you are. I'm just curious. Not you. Okay. Did we do our spiral? How did it go? Did it not get too huge? <laughs> okay, good. Hopefully that went all right. So now because we have this thickness here uh, of each of these separators, we have to give this line, our spiral, a little bit of thickness too. So we're going to go ahead and aura it. So I'm just kind of looping it around. 
and I'm just going to really carefully do a tight little aura all the way around. I'm going to turn my tile. Okay, when I get to the magnifying glass, I just pick up my pen, imagine drawing behind, and then I continue. Don't worry too much if the line's a little wiggly. It all kind of fades away when we add all the other details that we're going to put on this piece. So don't worry too much about it. Don't worry about it at all, actually. Okay, so we've aura. I'm going to see if I can get a little closer now that we're, you know what we're working with here. Okay, now we're going to do just what we were doing here whole bunch of orbs. We're going to fill this spiral with orbs. So I'm going to start in the middle with a pretty complete orb here. But all the other ones that come after are going to tuck behind just like our other ones did. And I'm, I really need to turn my tile for this, otherwise they don't come out the way I want them to. But as I go around the spiral, I just draw each of those orbs, one tucked behind the other. Think about your breath as you do this. Think about your pen stroke. When you get to the, when you run up against the uh, magnifying glass, just imagine those orbs falling underneath. If you're holding tension as you're drawing, try to relax it. Think about how nice it is that we just, it's one foot in front of the other. It's just one stroke at a time. And this beautiful thing is evolving right in front of us. And it's just these simple, hopefully easy relaxing strokes. And I love that philosophy of Zentangle, and I, it was fun to apply it to creating a magnifying glass. You know, what, what, what is it when you break it down? It's just lines and curves, circles, angles. If 
we just take a minute and break it down, we can do anything. Okay, so that looks amazing already. And then we'll go back in and fill in our interstices. I haven't been wearing my glasses and all of a sudden I was like, I can't see these interstices. <laughs> Where are they? Aha, there they are. And it when this little act of filling in, you can also um, use it to give love to the lines that you've drawn. And, and Molly, who's a one of the Zentangle um, creator she's uh, rick and maria she's maria's daughter she calls it um sculpting sculpting the lines and just i love that because when you're filling in with ink you know no one knows what was there before you laid down that extra ink and you can make it be whatever you want it to be now and there's a there's something very satisfying about that it's like even better than an eraser. You're not taking away, you're adding to make it stronger and more beautiful than it was before. You're sculpting your drawing, which is a very, very cool concept. So actually for me, this, um, this sculpting and the filling in, the darkening, and sometimes we call it zhuzhing, is my very most favorite part. And I love all of Zentangle, so that's saying something. And I'm turning my piece of paper so that I'm, I'm just following along, going around the spiral, turning as I go. Giving love and care and attention to this beautiful thing that's emerging in front of me. I'm not judging the many imperfections that are there. I'm it's becoming part of this unique piece that we're creating. This whole thing with them, um, you know, AI artificial intelligence uh, artwork now that is coming to the fore. You know, where is the human touch? You know, when does, where is art? Is it in the humanity of the creation of it? What is it that makes art beautiful? I think it's the, the tiny imperfections that prove the, the human hand behind it person who made it. All right. I'll give you another couple minutes to um, finish up that. That looks pretty cool. Pretty happy with that.
Does anybody have any questions so far? Everybody doing okay? Enjoying? Okay, you go. Enjoy your spiral of Zen. I'm just looking at yours and I looked at mine and I noticed, and I, I think it just ended up that way, but the way your last outside one kind of goes, follows that line, I think that really. That was, a, that was a very happy accident, Phyllis. That was not premeditated at all yeah, but like yeah it it may it may work out that way for you and it may not and that's okay but yeah that that was a happy accident <laughs> yeah that looks that looks I like that, that is pretty cool we're gonna add a couple little bit a uh, couple other pieces that come off the top and the bottom of our spiral which now that you're like tuned into that you may be able to like hook yours up to some of your other ones too um are we ready to move forward or do you need another minute we're good. Okay, great. So we're just going to add a little bit more to the shape with our, where's my, I put down my 01. Here it is. With my 01. So, um, so I'm going to start on the top here and I'm just kind of going to grow off a line that, so now that Phyllis mentioned it, I'm going to have it meet up with this one, but it really, it doesn't have to, but I'm just going to make it and then I'm going to give it that thickness there. And maybe I'm going to do one more that comes off and I'm, I'm making it match up here. If yours don't really, it's not a, not an issue at all. So I'm, I'm going to do two, you may want three, you know, whatever. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. just to give it a little bit more interest and in detail. And then like that as if it's sort of like a cross section of this um, spiraled shell. And we're gonna go ahead and put our orbs inside here as well so they're going to start really little And again, just, you know, you imagine them going behind the magnifying glass. I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. Some of this space is a little too small to do anything, so I'm just going to darken it in. And then I start to make my orbs.
Okay, and then just let's color in our interstices. We're almost done drying orbs, I promise. I think we are done drying orbs after this. But I don't know, you'll tell me after. I, I find it pretty relaxing and enjoyable. And even though it's just a tiny bit of ink, it really makes a difference when we color in. Okay. So this is where we are. I think that is pretty fantastic. I'll give you a minute to work on that. How are we doing? You need another minute or are you ready to move on? Good to move on most. Another one more minute. And we're gonna do some shading, but we're not done drawing. But we'll shade a little bit. I'm going to take my pencil, a little Zentangle pencil, and I'm going to start to do some shading. So I like to use the side of my pencil, not the tip. You get a softer line, and um, I find it easier to shade. I like to draw in little circles. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some shadow around the inside of our magnifying glass. So I'm just going to start around the this inside edge here and i'm just making little circles and i'm going to lay down a nice pretty thick layer of graphite all the way around the inside of this magnifying glass that we made Okay, and then once I've done that, then I'm gonna go and shade on either side of these, those first kind of stripes that we made. You don't really have to draw on the black where you inked in, but we're gonna get the tops of those orbs, the tops and bottoms of those orbs are gonna get some graphite so that we can shade these orbs so they look really really rounded you don't have to be super precise about it because we're going to use our magic tortillon to kind of blend everything in just a minute
So you can think of it as shading on either side of this, these lines, or you can think of it as shading the tops and bottoms of the orbs. I'm kind of going back and forth. I guess a little bit more shading the orbs than shading the lines, but. So once you've gotten down some good graphite, we can take our tortillon and we're just going to go back around the way we came. So I'm going to start by shading this inner circle. And I'm just pulling the graphite out closer to the center a little way. We want gradations. You know, it's darkest around the magnifying glass. Excuse me, hold on. <coughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. There's another one. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, it's, it's darkest, closest to the edge of the magnifying glass, and then it gets lighter as you go in towards the center. So this kind of feathering that happens, the gradations from dark to light. And if it feels like, you know, you didn't add enough, you can always go back in and add more graphite. Sorry, all of a sudden it was like, woo, sneezes. And again, I'm, I'm using the side of the tortillon, not the tip, and I'm just making a circular motion around. And now I'm going to go back in and I'll start just kind of rounding all of the graphite that I put in on the orbs. You can kind of retrace them a little bit with the tortillon. The, the graphite kind of goes where you want it to and you really have control. So you can kind of pull it and push it in it really get a nice rounding effect using these little circles. This is kind of the magical phase of the process when all of a sudden your two dimensional thing becomes three dimensional and yours probably looks even better in person because the, the camera I don't feel like feels doesn't deal well with the graphite you can't see it as well as it really shows up but I bet yours look really great. Really coming alive with depth and texture. So just enjoy that. You know, there's no wrong or right way. We're shading a, a two-dimensional made up thing. So, you know, whatever you decide to do is, is what's right for your creation. This is not anything that exists in the world except in your mind. And it, it shouldn't look just like mine. It probably doesn't look like anybody else's, and that's a good thing. So when you shaded that, we can go ahead and shade our um, shell shape now. And we're going to be same basic idea. 
um, let's go on, maybe we start on the outside, but we could shade the whole, it really doesn't matter how we go. Um, I'm gonna go just following around that very first line that I drew, little circles. Just putting in the layer. of graphite right above that very first line when we first drew that spiral. And then on these outer ones as well. You know, and maybe we want some on the other side of these orbs here too. Depends on how big your orbs are and, you know, if you have room. You know, what does it want from you? It always, it sounds weird and silly, but you know, there's, it comes a point when you're working on a, a Zentangle piece and it's like, well, what, what does this want from me right now? What, what does it say needs to come next? And, you know, you kind of work with your evolving creation. So once you've laid down some graphite or decided to add some more <laughs> as I am right now, um, then you can go in with your tortillon and sort of buff it out. You can use the tortillon even without adding graphite to to bring shading to areas that that don't have any pencil at all. And the the tortillon with a little bit of graphite on it will do that for you, which is cool. also shading kind of like along this edge of the magnifying glass here because if you think about it it would be in shadow under the the rim of the magnifying glass and and that's just with again the graphite that's on the tortillon that's already there You can go back in, you know, you you this is an evolving thing. So I, I want to go back in and add a little bit more graphite around here, around this edge. And it sends it underneath. And you just go back and forth with the pencil and the tortillon until you feel like you know, you've got the shading that you want. So one thing you want to retain are you know shades of gray. You want to leave the middles of your orbs white and the you know the outer edges are darker so you get that depth 
and roundness. If they're all gray, then you lose, then it's just flat again and it's just gray. So if you want the variation, the shades of gray. All right, it's looking good. So we could stop there and this is a pretty interesting exploration. You know, that it, it is beautiful in and of itself. Um, I have thoughts about what we can do in the background. I have many different thoughts about what we can do with this magnifying glass. Part of me likes it as the, the one thing that you would think would be realistic, like in this case, the magnifying glass is just as realistic as the rest of the drawing, even though the, the insect is kind of whimsical, but it's just as detailed. But I, I like that our magnifying glass is sort of the two dimensional unshaded thing, the simple thing, as if that is the non-real aspect of this piece. And then what we're looking at under the microscope is the hyper real. So I think that's really cool. And I also think we can now play with these orbs. So great, this is cool. And this is what it looks like when you're close up. What is happening with the camera right now? That's weird. Um, but what if there were things in this in these orbs that you can only see under a magnifying glass. So I have many different ideas about what we could do there. Um, I'm going to use this light gray pen that I have that you don't have. I'm sorry. I want to get them all for you, and I will. Um, but this would be a fun time to bring in a different colored pen. Maybe your brown, maybe blue or purple or pink or I don't know, whatever. It's sky's the limit. Or or the the thing that's most like this pen, which is a very light gray, is your pencil. So you could do what I'm going to suggest also in pencil too, especially if it's nice and sharp. If you have a sharpener, you could sharpen it. Um, and actually doing this in pencil would be very effective as well. So you can decide what you want to do. We're going to play with what would be in these orbs when you look at them very closely under this magnifying glass. So I have my gray, you get your pencil or your other color, your brown or your whatever, your whatever craziest thing you can think of. Because because whatever's under this magnifying glass is magical. And we're going to find out. So pick a pick a row, or maybe, or maybe yours are randomized throughout this whole thing. I'm going to do mine in rows, but you could really do it however you want to. I'm going to start here. And I think in, in this row of orbs, in each of these orbs are tiny little spirals. So I'm just going to fill each orb with a whole bunch of little spirals, like just like the, the mother shape here. And they're very faint and you wouldn't see them unless you were looking under a magnifying glass. And they kind of fade into the background under the shading here, but they're there. It adds this really cool, subtle texture. And whatever pencil or color you're using. And my thought about this is that, like, if you say if you're doing these little spirals in blue, 
that then maybe you add some blue colored pencil to your shading over here to hint at whatever's happening under the magnifying glass. But that's up to you. So for those of you who are familiar with Zen terminology, this is just printon, our little spirals used as a reticula in our fragment. Our fragments are the orbs. The reticula is the pattern in the fragment. It's always fun to play with like these patterns inside of patterns. So it's just, it's really, really subtle. You can hardly see it, but it's there. Are you going to continue to print all? Are you going to do it? No, row? I'm going to do all different ones in each row. You can you can do whatever you want. Um, so then I was playing around with these. Um, they call them moon pies. Um, so I'm going to start kind of in a middle one because there's a little bit more space. It's a little bit so make a little half round. I, I it it reminds me of an a, like a olive on psychedelics or something i don't know um so this little it's like at the beginning of crescent moon so this little lump here a curve that's filled in and then aura it and then another kind of curved line and then another little one right at, at the top. And then in this first one here, we're gonna do our same orb thing like we've been doing this whole time. And, and then in this one, just some striping and color in every other stripe. So, and you could make all of yours go the same way. That's how I did it the first time, but now I kind of want to try them going every which way. So I'm going to try that same thing going in another direction. So I'm going to start with that little ladybug lump down here. It looks like an olive when you do it like that. Then you aura. And then a, a larger or a, but it's curved, so that it goes with the shape of the, the orb that's already there. And then these orbs in this section. And then striping in this upper section and then coloring in every other. And they call this little pattern with the, or, you know, that, that little half round and then these orbs and then striping the moon eyes. Not totally sure why, but they're really cute. Um, so I'm going to try them kind of every which way on this row. If you're happy with Prantom, you can do that the whole way through. It's totally up to you. This is also kind of ref reminiscent of jetties, if you know that tangle as well. Those kind of look like Christmas ornaments.
So I'm just going to finish my row of little moon pie orbs and then we'll, we'll probably wrap up for today, but we, you know, we're not done yet and we'll uh, continue with this next week and see where we're going to go next. Let's see, how else do I want these to go? Micah, I have to get on an eight o'clock call. Thanks very much. And I'll see you guys next week. All right, take care, Rebecca. All right, so that's where I am so far. I'm gonna cap my pen for tonight and stop there. I'm gonna um, take my spotlight off. I would love to see kind of where everybody's at. I know we're all a work in progress. Mine's not as nice as yours, but it that's, was that's not, not a thing. That's not you. a thing. <laughs> These look great. We're not we're not comparing. We're just enjoying all of the beautiful variety. Oh, these are phenomenal. Beautiful, beautiful. So next week, my plan is I want to fill in the rest of our orbs for whatever magical things are in there. Gail, I love that you like um, made them all throughout and we'll fill them with the rest of them with different things. I think that looks so cool. Um, and then we'll play with the background, too. So we have a lot more that we can do with this piece. So I hope you're enjoying it. Um, let it sort of like sit and marinate this week and we'll we'll pick up where we left off next time. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you so everyone. much. Have a good week. Bye. Have a good week. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Micah. You. You're welcome. Thank you, Micah. You're welcome. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.